you've just been given your assignment title, your essay title. And so you go and look for journal articles that you can read that will be useful for your assignment. However, you notice that all of them seem to be more than 20 years old, they're too old for you to use, or they end up being really, really specific and completely unrelated to your title, even though you wrote a very key question in that search engine. If this has ever happened to you before, then you will want to watch this video because I will be giving you tips on how you can find the perfect journal articles for your essay, for your assignment, with just one search engine. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then hi, my name is Miss Paris, and I am a newly qualified primary school teacher from the UK. So, I gave you a brief summary of everything I'm about to say in this video. This video is full of tips, all for one search engine, so there's so much that you can do to find that perfect article that I wanted to share with you today. I'm going to share with you my screen, I have my trusty laptop here, and we are going to get down to the nitty gritty to help you find those perfect journal articles for your essay or assignment. So the search engine we will be focusing on is Google Scholar. Google Scholar is something you can access from anywhere. You don't necessarily need a university login. So if you are doing A-levels and you're doing an essay for politics or whatever, <laughs> then you can use this as well. So that's why I decided to focus on this one for my first video about essay tips. So my first tip would be about how specific your search is. For example, I've opened up Google Scholar. I'm putting something really generic like autism spectrum disorder in primary schools. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We've got such a large variety of searches because autism is quite well researched, but it's not necessarily showing me what I want. So this is where we look at our search and think, how can we be more specific? So let's say in this case, I wanted to know more about support in primary schools. So I would put autism spectrum disorder support. Okay, brilliant. So what we've got now is the self-efficacy of primary teachers in supporting the inclusion of children with autism spectrum disorder. Good. Using virtual reality to train emotional and social skills. So all of these things are suddenly more useful. You could go even more into detail and give the name of a specific intervention and maybe write about effectiveness if you are trying to critically evaluate different support systems, for example. So that would be my first tip, is to just be really specific in what you search. All these key words are normally going to flag up those searches that refer to those words in their journal article. My second tip is to use the cited by or related articles. So again, let's type something in effective, oh there you go, effective teaching, let's go with that. So you can see that we've got effective teaching strategies that accommodate diverse learners, but as you can see here, 1998, now in academic research or writing, they normally say not to use a journal article that is over 20 years old. So that would be no earlier than 2000 at the moment. I might look at this book and think, okay, that's really, really useful, but I can't use it, that's so irritating. So what you could do is go cited by, so as you can see here, there's 713 searches, and then you can have a look at plenty of books and journal articles that have linked that previous book in their text. And look, the first search is 2017, a book that is called Looking in Classrooms. So then we could press on that one and have a look at it. Alternatively, if we go back, then you can also go on to related articles, which will give related topics, but normally these still tend to be the out-of-date ones or ones that were made in a similar time. So be careful if the issue was related to your dates because then, you know, like you see here, 1998, 1998, 97, 96, 90, in this case it wouldn't work. But if you found an article that you loved from 2018, by pressing the related article, you might find ones from 2016 or 2019, all of those you can still use. My third tip would be about this function that they have on Google Scholar, which says all versions, and normally there's like a number next to it, so all five versions or six versions as you can see here. And what is brilliant about it is that it will give several different links that all link to the same article. However, some may give the whole PDF of that journal article or a whole chapter of a book, whereas others will just give you little extracts or the abstract of that journal article. So let me give you an example. If I just scroll down, I don't know, 
Okay, let's have a look at this one. So, cognitive and social constructivism. So as you can see here, there is already a PDF linked. However, if I go on all eight versions, and you can see I've got one, two different places that I can find this article. And often, if I can find different versions that link to the same place, but it's Semantic Scholar or ResearchGate, I tend to go for those ones because in the reference section it looks more professional, but it's not compulsory. So then if we press on the Semantic Scholar, we should have the entire PDF of this article. There we go. However, if we were to have pressed on this one, but there's not really much for you to go on. And so if you would have seen this website first, you might have been really frustrated and thought, oh, that would have been perfect. So that all versions option is really, really useful. Okay, before I go on to the next one, what have you enjoyed so far? Have you learned anything new? And if you haven't yet, stay tuned. My fourth tip is how to find journal articles, books that are in date, so less than 20 years old. So here I've typed in Piaget's developmental theory and you can see all these dates are quite old. So 1978, 75, 88, 76. So here you've got some different filters that you could do. So at the moment it's sorted by relevance, but what you can do is sort by date. And what it will do is straight away you can see 2018, 2020, again 2020. All of these articles are going to look better in your references. In one of my PGCE assignments, I put one, one that was older than 20 years old, thinking out of three pages they won't notice. They put a comment next to it saying, this is slightly out of date. <laughs> oh, it's so frustrating. So this little tool of just sort by date is so useful. I literally cannot recommend it enough. Okay, hang on everybody. I've got to quickly charge my laptop because it's gonna die soon. Okay, tip number five is about finding references within the resources that you have already read. So here I have put into Google Scholar, training teacher concerns, huge passion of mine, I always want to help, so let's have a look. Okay, so this article, listening to the concerns of student teachers in Malaysia during teaching practice. Let's press on that. So I've got my PDF, 13 pages. Let's say I read it all and I absolutely loved it. What I'm going to do is go to the reference section. Here we go, so references. I suddenly have loads of references that I can have a look at. It's easy to cut the list down by looking at the ones that are within that 20 years. So I've got a 2009 one, 2008 one, 2001 one, <laughs> and I can just have a look at what titles grab my attention, what could be useful for my assignment. So let's say my assignment is on teaching concerns, training teaching concerns, and how I can overcome them. Okay, 2008, the use of reflective journals in outcome-based education during the teaching practicum. I will have a look at that and then I could repeat the pattern, see if I like that one and then look at their reference sections and before you know it you could have a fairly decent reference list. I hope that it was useful for you, I know how stressful finding references can be for your assignments and essays. Oh my goodness I've been there, I've spent hours before just looking for an article, days even, and so I really hope that just with this one search engine, this allows you to be more productive with your time and find things that are actually useful for you rather than making resources that aren't the best to work for you. So if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up so that YouTube can suggest it to other trainees out there or even other students. And don't forget to subscribe for more teacher content. See you soon, bye.